Back in the 50s, we'd never had it so good. Although some of us had never had it at all. Great Britain was going to get greater. Everyone was going to have cars and money. So they took a load of jewellery, scots and cockneys, out of the run-down mines and the shipyards, and dumped them in the middle of green and pleasant England. They built a new town and called it Telford. Their kids were going to grow up happy, healthy and well paid, making car door seals for British Leyland. 20 years later. <laughs> Welcome to Telford, The Ultimate Guide, Part 4. In this episode, we take a look at Woodside. Planning for Woodside started in 1966 and was the new town's second and largest housing estate, eventually providing homes for over 2,400 residents on 223 acres in Colebrook Dale. The plan for the estate included one and two bedroom flats and three and four and five bedroom houses, all built to the Parker Morris standard. Construction started in 1967 and the estate was designed using the Radburn Superblock principle. This exceptionally large housing estate featured a local centre with a pub and a community centre and two small corner shops at either end of the estate. The superblock principle was used all over the estate but was more prominent at the northern end with lozenge shaped blocks of houses. Woodside was unique in the way it was built but also the residents it attracted. Welcome to Telford New Town. Over there are the foundations of a new city. It is your city for Telford has been planned and has progressed since it all began way back in 1963 to become the new city of the Midlands. The first house was handed over by the TDC in 1969 to its residents. During the building of Woodside, Dorley Newtown changed its name to Telford. The residents of Woodside got the first TF postcode. This part of Woodside 
was one of the first areas to be built and it was built on the Radburn principle which is the classic super block already been demonstrated on Sutton Hill but this is one of the a great example of the super block you can see how the houses stagger down and as you'll be able to see from one of the aerial photographs they're actually in lozenge shaped blocks um, which create a really nice look from from above but inside but what it involved is these lozenge shaped blocks having a green spaces in between them and little areas where we're standing now which is which are little parks and stuff lots of planting lots of trees in 1967 the government made the Parker Morris standard mandatory for all new housing developments the standard was enforced on the Woodside housing estate. The regulations ensured that there was one flushing toilet per one to three bedroom dwelling. This gave residents adequate space for the number of occupants specified in each home. A semi-detached or end of terrace house for four people had a net floor area of 72 square metres including adequate storage. All dwellings were to be fitted with central heating systems that maintain the kitchen and circulation space at 13 degrees Celsius. It's worth noting that most Woodside houses were larger than many private housing developments at the time. Again we're in the Radburn Superblock area and this network of informal streets crisscross the estate but every one of the paths lead to the local centre. As the build programme progressed, the contractors, Bryant Construction of Solihull, were completing more and more homes. Eventually it got to the stage where the houses were being completed more quickly than they were being occupied, which attracted vandalism on empty properties. This was tackled by the 1968 Come to Telford campaign, which was targeted at Birmingham residents. Within three weeks of the campaign launch, the TDC received over 300 applications to fill the empty homes. By Woodside's completion in 1973, a thriving community had been created. The TDC moved on to Brookside, leaving Woodside Estate to mature with thousands of new trees and shrubs. Children of Woodside were treated to a brand new play area and play centre. This was created from two former British Rail train carriages. These were cleverly joined together to make a place where children could enjoy fun times. The nearby Fort play area was built from pine trees. By today's standards it would be a health and safety nightmare but was lots of fun at the time.
home is where the heart is. Well, that's what they used to say in the days when uh, young couples planning to get married were destined to spend the first years of their married life in a room at Mum's or in a bed sitter, waiting for a house on an overcrowded housing list to become vacant. But here in Telford, home is where the house is. And on this adage, Telford has become a pulsating, beating live community. Woodside residents did their shopping in Maidley Centre, but used the local Lipton supermarket for their day-to-day -day essentials. Just imagine coming from a small terraced house in Birmingham to a light and airy new home on the Woodside estate. Woodside was the TDC's second housing estate with over 2,500 residents whose children were educated at the nearby Abraham Darby School or the adjacent Maidley Court School. No, you don't have to do time on a housing list here in Telford. But you might have to pause a while before you get into this corporation house which is open every weekend. It's a show house and it certainly attracts the visitors. About 150 to 200 families every weekend begin their search for a new life right here in Telford. years Woodside has changed. Original homeowners and tenants leave and make way for social housing and private landlords. Some original residents hang on hoping for a better Woodside. By the year 2000, Woodside had started showing its age. The 350 deck access flats and masonettes in Park Lane, affectionately known as the Court, became no-go areas and attracted anti-social behaviour. It became a problem hotspot for the local police. Woodside began to gain a reputation as one of the most run-down estates in the West Midlands. The local centre began to deteriorate. Woodside was now showing serious signs of decay and neglect.
In 2002, Telford and Reeking Council drew up a master plan to regenerate and change Woodside forever. After extensive public consultation, work began in 2004, which involved the demolition of the court, which then made way for 191 new homes by private developer Bellway Homes. This regeneration was kicked off by a visit by Prince Philip. Meanwhile, in the centre of the estate, the former shopping centre and community centre were demolished. These were replaced with brand new facilities. The Park Lane Centre, which includes a youth club, a housing association office, a pharmacy and a dentist. The Park Lane Centre gave the residents of Woodside their community back. Most people would say that Woodside has changed complete and utterly unrecognisable and that is completely evident here in the local centre. I mean what it used to be and what it is now is a vast improvement. Behind me is the Park Lane Centre. This is the community hub for Woodside and people come here you can see all of the different things that are going on there. It's a right nice place for people to come and be a community. community centre what they also got is this lovely parade of shops here a really really nice community feel here right in the hub of Woodside part of the regeneration included a new concept called home zone initially this included the streets of Wyvern and Westbourne which saw the demolition of 12 houses and the construction of 12 new modern homes In 2006, Home Zone was created. A great idea to try and change the way the housing estate functioned. And you can see here, Wyvern Home Zone 2006, of just the way the layout, the streets are laid out to just to calm that traffic down and mix pedestrians with the road as well. The good thing about Home Zone was the way it was designed. What you get is these informal cobbled streets you can see sort of different tarmac as well just to make the area a little bit more interested lots of new trees were planted as well but what one 
great thing about it is how they change the properties. So each area had its own designated parking space with this fencing around the outside. Um, also on some of the properties on the front you had a brand new front fence and it almost created a bit more of a, un a uniformity to the estate. And thanks to that what you get is a much more tidy, cleaner look within the estate. A lot of the residents also benefited from a new prefabricated garage. Not every house got them, but you can see that lovely industrial pitch on the garage. It's actually a prefabricated garage which has been cladded in timber. A lot of the houses on Woodside were planned around the Radburn principle, which involves creating super blocks. And this is a typical example of a super block. A group of houses built around a central green area, which is really good for involving the community and everybody getting to know each other. Um, and everybody, when anybody comes out of each other's houses, they can see each other. So it adds that really nice community feel. Woodside is changing and evolving all the time and a great example is the new shops in Warren's Way. Now they're not, well they are new but they replaced the old ones that used to be here. So here you used to have a little park and um, I think you had a chip, fish and chip shop here and also an original shop but it goes to show how much Woodside's changing where the home zone created roads where footpaths were, but actually just created a whole new feel to Woodside and it just feels a lot nicer. The home zone concept was designed to slow down traffic and create a tidier, more attractive street scene. This was then expanded to Withybrook and Weybridge, Warren's Way and Weldstone. Again, this involved the demolition of five homes and the existing shop. These were replaced by new cutting edge housing and a brand new shop. Believe it or not, we're on Westbourne in Woodside. But with the building behind me, you'd be forgiven for thinking we're in Cambridge or Milton Keynes for that matter. With this beautiful mono pitch roof house here. One detached house as far as I can tell, but look how huge it is. It towers above everything. It's almost like a cathedral. Here's another example of the amazing infill housing on Woodside. You can see these striking white render um, and timberboard properties here that have been, been built by um, a, a local housing association but you can see that striking mono pitch there which we've seen on, on the previous houses but these houses completely stand out from any of the others and it's pretty brash and pretty brutal but I actually love it This is Warren's Way on Woodside, part of the 2006 Home Zone project. This was to try and change Woodside and try and make it a little bit more of a nicer community to live in. And this area here is affectionately known as a dip. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this name will probably remember sledging down this area. By 2008, more new houses were built by the local housing association. Also, new shops were built. Also, an extra care facility offering sheltered housing for older residents was built in the area. Up until 1990, Woodside had been excluded from any private housing investment between 1990 and 91, investment came with a new concept in dual ownership homes by the TDC. A development of two and three bedroom semi-detached houses were built in, on Rough Park and was called Coppice View. Today sees the redevelopment of the Woodlands Primary School site into new homes on Woodland Walk. 
This initiative, called New Place, is funded by the local authority in Telford, creating 113 two, three and four bedroom homes solely for the rental market. Land at Rough Park was opened up for private development. Kickstarted by McLean Homes, providing three and four bedroom detached houses at Pepperstones. McLean were then joined by Gothridge and Sanders and the starter home concept at Oak Meadow Village. For those seeking a much larger home, Malamar Homes created The Keep in 2001, which was a small collection of 14 five bedroom homes. This was built upon a disused pit mound and is a gated community. A large part of Rough Park is now a beautiful wildflower meadow. It is lovingly cared for by the Friends of Rough Park. We hope you've enjoyed this informative guide to the TDC's largest housing estate in the borough of Telford and Rekin. Join us again soon for the next instalment of the Ultimate Guide.